Hello, welcome to Solar Quotes Vodcast Episode 9. <laughs> I can count. How are you, Ronald? Oh, I'm fired up with righteous indignation. How are you? I'm a bit flat. Oh, here, have some indignation. I've got plenty to spare. Thanks. Why are you, uh, why are you righteous and indig- indignant? Uh, because the perfectly good solar installers are uh, possibly going to go bankrupt in Victoria through no fault of their own. You mean this? <gasps> <laughs> yeah, you heard of that. What is the approved solar retailer scheme for those guys watching? Well, I wrote a whole article about it, and I know you read it, so please tell us. <laughs> okay, very quickly. Uh, the Clean Energy Council... Its main job, in my opinion, is to accredit installers. Installers are individual people that bolt the solar panels to your roof, among other things. So you have to be accredited. The individual has to be an accredited installer to do the solar installation and claim what I call the federal solar rebate. So the approved solar retailer scheme is a totally different scheme. It's not for installers, it's for retailers or people selling solar. It's a code of conduct supposedly voluntary um, that people have to sign up to they have to say I'm going to follow this code of conduct when I'm selling and marketing the system so it covers advertising uh, customer service quoting all that stuff it doesn't actually cover the install so and it's supposed to be voluntary um, and it's it's the company not the individual that's approved anything else I've missed not that I can see. Good introduction. Thank you. Uh, so last night, um, the Victorian government announced that they would make it mandatory for all solar companies to be a Clean Energy Council approved solar retailer if they want to sell systems that are eligible for the Victorian solar rebate of an additional $2,250 off the price of a decent sized solar system. Mm-hmm. Well, Ronald, surely they're just kicking out the dodgy guys and protecting the consumer, what's wrong with that? Well, there are several factors at play here which could act to the detriment of the Australian consumer. Firstly, they're restricting supply of solar installers. This, there's this thing called supply and demand, us communists came up with a while ago. I've heard of that. The, uh, when you restrict the supply, the people who can install the systems... The prices go up. Yeah, price and demand stays the same, the price is going to go up. That always happens? Yes. Right. So that's yes. going to happen. Because they will be less installers that can quote for jobs. That's right. And even if you don't believe in supply and demand, the Victorian government does. Uh, they've invested money to train new uh, installers because they knew there'd be a huge demand. And now they're restricting the supply. So with one hand, they're doing one thing. With another hand, they're doing the opposite. <sighs> yeah, so prices will go up in Victoria. That is mm. absolutely inevitable. I don't know how anyone can argue with that. But hang on. All these... Why don't all the solar installers in Victoria just become an approved solar retailer? Because it takes time and effort and money to become one. Basically, it's going to be impossible to sell solar systems to all intents and purposes competitively in Victoria unless you're an approved solar retailer scheme. I warned this would happen about two weeks. (laughs) might happen about two weeks ago and I was accused of fear mongering. (laughs) Um, Okay. I'm just going to go and get my notebook because I've forgotten it. So I think people in the industry generally understand why approved solar retailer is Um, the kind of nuances around it. But for the public, Mm. I think a lot of them just see, hey, this is a good thing because it protects consumers. Yes, uh, that's what they'll see, yes. There's lots of things already protecting consumers. And in my consideration, the the retailer scheme is now anti-consumer. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Mm -hmm. Big call. (laughs) Go on, justify that. Quite simple. Um, one, they're raising costs. Two, they're reducing Definitely. choice. Definitely. Um, and uh, that's anti-consumer. That's and it's anti-market. Simple. So you were you. 
Okay. Now, I wrote down some notes on the train on the way here. Oh, very Can good. I indulge myself? Please do. Uh, number one, I think it's fundamentally dishonest to sell the approved solar retailer scheme, which was sold to us in 2013 as a voluntary scheme. On the press release, when the Clean Energy Council announced it, it's there in black and white, this is a voluntary scheme. When the ACCC approved it, it's there in black and white on their approval paperwork, we approve this voluntary scheme. Now, it is absolutely not voluntary if you are a solar installer or a solar retailer who wants to sell solar systems in Victoria. Um, you know, I was brought up to say, you should do what you say and say what you do. And I just, on, on an ethical yeah. level, this is, this is just so wrong to me. It's almost literally Orwellian, I think. Um, yeah. Number two, what have I got written here? We've got, we've got Australian consumer law in this country, which is mm. brilliant. Ronald and me have spent a lot of time writing stuff, making videos, educating consumers who are buying solar about their rights under Australian consumer law about gotchas. Mm -hmm. um, Australian consumer law is so strong for the consumer that it protects you against everything that I can see that the approved solar retailer scheme does. It just needs to be enforced and people mm -hmm. need to be educated. And I think it would be fair to say that I, I can't see any evidence of the Clean Energy Council actually putting money or effort into educating the consumer about their rights under Australian consumer law. Have you seen? Not that I'm aware of, no. I think the arrogance of the CEC to say we're the only people that can fix this problem is staggering. Yes, All right. It's a false choice. It's a false choice. They're saying you our either way. have a totally deregulated industry retailers or you have this scheme. Yeah, our way or highway. Total false no. di dichotomy, that's the word, isn't it? Yes, that's all. That Big is word. a word. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, we've been in this game. Well, I've been doing this for 10 years. We've got nearly 400,000 people being through the system. We've seen thousands and thousands of um, people getting quotes for solar and seeing where they have problems. We invite people to email us when they have a problem with a retailer, with an installer, whether they were through solar quotes or not. So we've seen a lot of stuff. I think there's four or five big pro problems that need to be addressed when people are buying solar. Um, the first one is they get ripped off. When I say ripped off, I mean a retailer, a com solar company charging, say, $15,000 for mm. a five, six, seven thousand dollar $7,000 system. Yeah, that fair. happens. It's often people who can't afford it. I can't see anything in the approved retailer code of conduct that stops that happening. No, nothing. I can't, and I have seen a company who's not around anymore, one of the founder members of the approved solar retailer code of conduct, who are absolutely doing this, in my opinion, absolute rip-off prices through door knocking. Mm -hmm. Yep. Approved solar retailer, I complained numerous times through the official channels, nothing of happen. substance happened. Yep, nothing happened. Um, this does not protect people from getting ripped off in that way as far as I can see. Um, the other thing we have is people get systems that perform poorly, um, don't generate the energy they should. Again, Australian consumer law has got that totally covered. Mm. You have a right to a system yep. that does what the salesman said it would do. Yeah, it has to do what they promise. Yeah. It has to do what it's meant to do. Has to do has to. Um, the fourth big problem I'm seeing, especially right now, is performance claims. So solar, it's not such a big problem with solar these days because solar is such a good payback for almost yeah. everyone. You don't have to gild the lily. No. But where people are really getting hurt is batteries. Yes. So I complained to the highest level of the CEC about one approved solar retailer who was ignoring feed-in tariffs and calculating the payback of batteries and assuming 10% electricity price inflation yeah. over 10 years. These mm. people were spending tens of thousands of dollars and their payback would not be a fraction of what was promised. Mm. Nothing happened to this approved solar retailer. And that's just, that's just one out of more than one example. So the, Approved solar retailer scheme, as far as I can see, does not protect people from over-exaggerated claims about the performance of batteries mm. in particular. Um, the other thing they're saying is, look, we're just, the Cleats is the Clean Energy Council, we're just trying to remove the dodgy guys from the market. Mm. Unfortunately, there, in my opinion, are plenty of dodgy solar retailers already in the scheme. They've found their way into the scheme. Um, 
have, on a number of occasions, people from the CEC have said it's ridiculous that they should be expected to not let someone in the scheme because they've got a poor reputation in the industry. Yeah. That's sort of quotes. That's if you've got What's a poor point? <laughs> you've got a poor reputation in the industry, we'll make sure that that poor reputation is well founded. And if it is, you ain't getting in. Mm. Um, we will not recommend a company to anyone that uses the site that we wouldn't recommend our own family use. Um, mm. Next point, we've covered that. Prices will rise. Absolutely yes. inevitable. Um, and like you said, it's a false dichotomy. It's not a choice between no regulation and getting ripped off and having this scheme compulsory. That's mm. absolutely a false choice. And anyone that says that is a disgrace. Mm -hmm. um, oh my God, there's more. It wasn't even a long train journey. It's only 20 minutes. Um, if you're already an approved solar retailer and you're a really good company and there are lots of really good approved solar retailers, don't get me wrong, and a few bad ones, this is really bad for you because the CEC have absolute power to destroy your business by kicking you out of the scheme. So if, at the moment, if you're in Victoria, when it becomes mandatory, July for large retailers, November for small retailers, there's plenty of, as far as I can see, subjective clauses in the code of conduct where the CEC can decide that you've breached something and I want, you know, they can kick you out essentially. Yeah. It's, number one is the most dangerous number in business and you're handing the fate of your business to one organization mm. and that is dangerous. I'm laughing because I didn't laugh, I cry. I feel so, I, I got out of bed this morning and I felt like giving it all up, I really did. I put 10 years into this and anyway, I won't, I won't, I won't. I just, I don't but feel like that very it, often, but I did this morning. Is this bad for your business? Well, that's the last point I wanted to get to. Okay, so I'm having people uh, accusing me. This happens all the time when I criticize something that mm. they might disagree with. They say, you're only saying that, Finn, because it hurts your business. Making the approved solar retailer scheme mandatory is actually going to be really good for the solar quotes business. But I'm against it because I think it's wrong in terms of right and wrong. And I'll, I'll explain why it's good for our business. Solar Quotes has the best and biggest stable of high quality ethical solar installers in Australia. Our competitors, in my opinion, with the exception of Solar Choice, they, I think they vet their guys well, um, have a client base of installers who take their very low quality leads. Um, and I think I'll, a lot of those clients will really struggle to get in the approved solar retailer scheme because of the type of companies they are. He's telling the truth. <laughs> um, our software, for a long time now, we've um, set up our database in our software. So the, we call it the dispatch software. The brains behind the site knows who the approved solar retailers are. We've set up a system where when an approved solar retailer is um, approved and put up on the Clean Energy Council site, we get pinged. Um, and we change their review page to show that they're an approved solar retailer. Same thing if they get kicked off. Um, so our algorithm can handle the fact, you know, we'll have to have a checkbox in there that says we will only send your quote request to an approved solar retailer scheme, assuming that you want the Victorian solar rebate. We can do that. And most of our clients will sign up and will get approved because they're all really good guys. A few of our clients might choose not to sign up in Victoria and give up the solar game. I don't know. Some might not get approved. Um, I'd be surprised because they're all doing the right thing. Um, but it, yeah, that, that'd be really good for our business. We'll have a real USP, more, even more so than we have now, because, yep, we can um, refer you to an approved solar retailer in Victoria, so you're guaranteed that you'll be eligible for the rebate. Um, and our client base makes that really good. So it's really good for our business, but I still think it's really fucking wrong. Just wrong. Yes, On a kind it's of wrong. There's right and wrong, and this is uh, just this is objectively wrong. Yeah, thing to it do. Is. It's bad for the country. It's bad for the environment. Prices go up. Less solar gets installed. Can I have a moment? Okay. Ah! Right, moving on. Okay. <laughs> Prices <laughs> can turn green and ten feet tall. Yeah, yeah, something like that. Mm. Okay. Uh, happy news. Ah, oh, yeah. what's going on? Tesla has re announced the release. They've revealed their latest electric car, the Model Y. <laughs> and um, it's the cheapest version is $73,000 Australian. That's with GST, but not all the other drive-away right. costs. 
So, so that's an expensive car. That is an expensive car. That'll buy a house in parts of Australia. It will. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, dry parts. Like you won't, Oslo. You won't, you won't spend any money on petrol, though. That, yeah, and that's... Oh, the Tesla side is so full of shit. <laughs> they put a price you, up. Say what you think. They put a price up, but it's actually... You actually have to pay a couple thousand dollars more because they say, oh, that's with five years of petrol savings built in. They got forced to take that down in Germany, I think. Uh, yeah, I, but still an Australian site, and I can't see how that is legal. That's so much bullshit. It's, it's misleading, surely. Yeah, you, know, I mean, you don't expect... If, if I buy a juicer, can they <laughs> subtract the vet price of all the savings I get on buying juice from the supermarket? Is that fair? Do you buy a lot of juice? No. <laughs> um, yeah, it's, it's, you know, everyone who has a Tesla car or any electric car says they're great to drive, so and so, and they've probably fixed all the quality control, most of the quality control issues they had, so probably is great to drive, I wouldn't know. Um, and it's, yeah, it's going to be years before it's available here. But yes, the Model Y, yes. The Model 3. Yes. And it will be here soon, won't it? I'm hoping to get one this year. Yep. Yep. How much do you think you pay? 70 for a, for a reasonable spec, I'm hoping. Okay. I d- hopefully that's not the base model. No, the base model's much cheaper and I put the price up. On the on a graph for you. Would you like to see that graph? Well, I put I have minutes power. of effort into it. Please, please show everyone the graph. Okay, here we are. So I've got uh, three electric cars. We've got the two thousand, the latest Nissan Leaf, the Tesla Model Three, which Finn is going to get, and I'm going to borrow, <laughs> and the Hyundai Kona electric. So um, as you can see, the knee- Leaf is definitely the cheapest there, but you've got the more you pay the more range you get uh and these are the basic models the leaf's got 40 kilowatt hour battery in it something like that 270 yeah. kilometers of range have you got that on there uh oh yep. you agree with me yeah that's, oh, cool. i put the ranges on so um 270 kilometers that's fine if you drive it around town if you drive you can drive for a fair way out of town on that and back um if we want the longer range though, pay extra and get it. So yeah, it's range is not the big issue people used to think it was. Do you think they'll sell a lot of Nissan Leafs at 50 grand? Ah, yeah, yeah. People, I've talked to people who own them and they love them. Um, they stopped selling them in Australia for a long time. They had some battery issues, yes. Quite a few of the earlier Leafs had to have their batteries replaced under warranty. Apparently they didn't like the heat in Australia. Right. I presume that's all fixed now, otherwise they wouldn't be selling them again here. Okay. Yes, yeah, and prices will come down before, you know, and that they will. Because it's cheap to make an electric car. So if your Hyundai dies tomorrow... Yes, I'd be very sad. Will you be tempted to replace it with an electric? I would make... i get an electric bicycle like you have. Smart move. And I would wait a few years for prices to come down because... Um, we could say, if I can save twenty thousand dollars on an electric car, well, that's it takes t- two or three years. That's ten thousand dollars a year I'm saving just by waiting. That that'll pay for a lot of um, pedaling, a lot of donuts to uh, drive the power my pedaling. Mm. Oh, you get pedal assist though. Yes, but I'm mighty and not weak, so I will rarely use that. I love my electric bike. Mm-hmm. Um, it replaces a lot of car journeys for me. I'll, I'll need a big one though. <laughs> <laughs> I have a big ass. You probably can't tell. <laughs> <laughs> moving on. Moving on. Anyway, moving on. Hey. Oh. Back yeah. to South Australia. South Australia's home battery scheme. Where is it at? So. Mm-hmm. Where is it at? The South Australian government released some numbers. I need to mm-hmm. dig into them because I've got some extra numbers that I requested and I haven't dug into them yet. Um, the ones they released, which you'll imagine are, um, is massage the right word, presented mm. to make them look better than reality might be. F- I think it was $550,000 spent on advertising. Mm. Uh, t- about 1,200 loans approved. Uh-huh. 
but then the numbers I've got separately were that there's less than 400 have actually resulted in battery installations. Now I think what, what happens there is, I certainly know that um, for a fact that one of the uh, battery retailers, they were telling their sales staff, sign people up, lock them into the battery rebate, so it's a 6,000 up to $6,000 rebate, um, basically use the angle that it won't last long mm -hmm. and they need to lock it in now. And then once they're locked in, to the subsidy with our brand of battery, then go for the sale. Oh. So I think that's how you've got 1,200 people have locked in the subsidy, mm. but only 400 have gone ahead with a battery installation. So kind of a 30% conversion rate from yeah. locking into the subsidy to getting a sale. So $550,000 to advertise mm. 400 and get, they got less than 400 sales. They're spending a lot of money on advertising. Yeah. We're so, slightly better at marketing. Yes if I may humbly say so, than the South Australian government. And we don't cost the taxpayers anything. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, one more thing on this. So the angle that the government and many um, solar companies were using when this kicked off was getting quick. Yeah. These rebates are limited. Yeah. It's technically true. Yeah, technically. At this rate of adoption um, of subsidies getting confirmed, I think we worked out it'll take 15 years. To, to spend the money. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's a long time. Now, to be fair, I imagine it will accelerate as better deals come on. Yes. And battery prices reduce, but yeah, but it doesn't seem like they're going to run out anytime mm, soon. Definitely not. Now, mm -hmm. some good news. Oh, excellent. Best review of the week. Uh, now, this is a brand new Solar Quotes client. Uh, Ned chose this. Mm -hmm. uh, they're called Teasleg, and they're in Melbourne. Uh, mm -hmm. Brad and his staff were fantastic. Brad came out to quote and discussed options of installation from the start, not just a Google quote like the others. Mm -hmm. Brad sorted out my electrical issues, used top quality cable and isolators. They also checked out tiles for roof mounts and did not leave tiles proud. Well, I mean, good. Mm -hmm. They're not allowed to under the installation guidelines, but um, mm -hmm. they've obviously done a very good job and reassured the customer that he's got a good install. Uh, the other large mob were never going to do half of what Tease Like mm -hmm. did. I recommend them thoroughly, and once you speak to Brad, you will have full confidence. And I thought this was nice and interesting, especially in the context of what we started with. He's primarily a Sparky and not a solar salesman. So, um, it, uh, communication was excellent throughout the whole process. I got three quotes off solar quotes on the 22nd. Uh, Brad called the next day, and the unit was installed on the 8th of the following month. Excellent stuff, Brad and team. Nice one, Tease Like. Mm -hmm. um, I just hope you can um, get approved solar retailer status uh, it's not too expensive it's not too burdensome on you so you can continue to do a great job in Melbourne and I know it's hard to believe but we did not cherry pick that to be an example in Melbourne um, yes. that's just what Ned chose uh, uh, what's the worst one <laughs> can I do this one yeah go for it this is a review of me personally oh <laughs> and the worst one of all Oh, all those letters after your name. You must be very proud. I only have a BSc, Electrical Engineering, uh, UTS Sydney. <laughs> Curiously, in all those letters, you don't appear to have an actual degree in anything. I didn't know that. I do. It's first class honours. But anyway. You do, it seems, have a good social network to bamboozle your way into registers and associations. <laughs> I am quite firmly of the belief that you are a snake oil salesman, to put it into the kindest words I can muster. <laughs> the only universities you quote are on the other side of the planet. Whew. Yep. Big name universities for a, a little man with no actual <laughs> qualification. <laughs> and the CSIRO, cleaner, was it? I might have cleaned my desk. I definitely had to clean it once. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think you might have blown, blown the microphone for you. <laughs> what are you on? <laughs> Uh, yeah, thanks for that, Ronald. I wasn't oh, expecting that. Um, yeah, this is a gentleman who, um, how did this start? He sent a ticket to the support desk. Uh, just a one-line question, what is a chartered engineer? So I googled what is a chartered engineer and sent him the link. Um, 
for those that don't know and why should you a chartered engineer to become a chartered engineer in australia you need the right degree from the right institution you need the right documented experience you need to pass an interview and then you need to keep uh, continuous professional development points audited up to date all the time you're a uh, chartered engineer i got audited one or two years ago um and they kept me on as a chartered engineer rightly or wrongly um i couldn't do it uh it's kind of it's yeah it's it's not easy it takes you know a minimum of six years um i think <laughs> anyway so i sent him this back and this is um and, and then he sent me another one back going that doesn't tell me anything <laughs> i still don't believe you're a chartered engineer so i sent him the certificate from the national professional engineers register that proves i'm a chartered engineer i don't know why i bothered but you know <laughs> didn't take long um and then he sent this back because on the certificate it does actually put like a gazillion letters after your name, <laughs> MPN, blah 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 blah, IPEQ. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so that was that was so, that, that was the worst review of the week. What did you do to this man? Drown his goldfish? I don't know. Yeah. Okay. I don't know why he's so angry. Mm. Um, it makes me might just be bored. I yeah, I mean, him. if I'm if I'm lying about my qualifications, lying about being a chartered engineer, and lying at working at the CSIRO, I. Mm. Someone, should, you know, someone should collar me for yeah. deceptive, misleading conduct. You know, I think so. Um, Still, you're doing a good job for no one, for someone with no training or <laughs> qualifications. So. Yeah, good show, of it. I don't know. Anyway, so that was the worst one. Thanks. Mm-hmm. Uh, my ears are still ringing. Oh, this is one that you wrote. Yes. Zen shine. Sorry. Zen shine. Uh, what are Zen shine solar panels? Zen shine solar panels are tier one, which is evidence that they are good quality and their lower cost tier one panels hang on mm-hmm. i'll stop you there just because i can hear the uh, critics in my ear they're going to say tier one's a crock of shit doesn't mean anything well it definitely means something it does mean something yes so if a, a tier one panel means financial institutions will lend money to solar projects that use them. It's not a direct measure of panel quality, so critics are correct in that. But you can't get tier one status if your panels are crap. Because no one's going to use them on a solar farm. Yeah, exactly. It's a proxy for quality. A proxy, yes. Is that the right word? Yeah. And Um, it also involves the financial status of the company. So that is a factor besides quality an important factor yeah it is important i mean it's a good it's a good high level filter for filtering out the absolute dross yeah like there's some there's some no-name brands that are approved for somehow um approved for installation in australia that they're not unsafe basically yeah but that highly unlikely to last very long and it will Mm. filter out a lot of those so i still have confidence in the tier one despite it being used and abused by Mm. companies and people anyway sorry yeah um they have a 10-year product warranty, typical boilerplate 25-year performance warranty. Uh, they, as far as I'm aware, they're not bad panels. They, you get what you pay for generally, so don't you know, expect them to outperform more expensive tier one panels. But um, the problem is they don't have an office in Australia. That's like kind of one point of failure there. Yeah, one point. So if the installer goes bust, which unfortunately happens, then you've got no warranty left, no recourse if there is a problem. Hopefully there won't be a problem, but it's still nice to have a warranty backup which works, yes. Anything else about ZN Shine? They've got a company song? Uh, no, not that I'm aware of, but if I'm willing to write one for them if they contact me. And Dear ZN this- Shine, Ronald at solarquotes.com.au, mm-hmm. make him an offer, and if it's high enough he might write you a company song yes and i have to thank lawrence um in the comments he explained <laughs> where their name comes from i need to put a footnote in that article updating it where does their name come from it's a, it's a chinese word meaning um oh well please read the comment i'll get it uh. all wrong so it's based on a chinese word so what the z and the end together and yeah apparently when they i don't i don't understand it just based on a Chinese word. Let's leave it at that. Move okay. On. Leave it at that. Move okay. On. Yeah. Okay. Let's move on to uh, this is a new solar panel mm-hmm. from Panasonic, the N330E Hit AC. Yes. It has got a N phase IQ7 
micro inverter pre-installed mm -hmm. in the factory on the back uh, Panasonic are a fantastic solar mm -hmm. panel manufacturer the only downside for us Aussies is I don't think you can get them in Australia anymore you used to yeah that's a pity because they do really well in the heat how well uh, record-breaking the best I'm aware of um, so a typical panel will lose 0.4 percent of the power it puts out for every degree increase in temperature a panel temperature Yes, or panel temperature. And uh, this one is close to half that. It's 0.28, isn't it? Something like that. Yeah, that's good. Mm -hmm. uh, Panasonic make the solar panels in the Tesla solar panel factory. Oh. The Tesla branded solar panels. Um, those solar panels have a 0.29. Right. I've got a so funny that's... feeling they're very similar. Yes, yes. Um, T yeah. Tesla is weird. They keep putting skirts on their solar panel installations. That's like, going to stop the wind from blowing through. Who would have thought that would, yeah, that maybe would hurt the, hurt the temperature performance. Yeah, maybe that's why they have to yeah. use these uh, heat-resistant panels. Mm. Yeah. Um, Pre-installed microinverters, I think that's a great idea. It's very popular in the United States. Yeah. Mm, it's big there. I still think it's taking longer than I thought, and I might be wrong. I think AC is the future. I think uh, AC coupling of panels and of batteries is the future. I see uh, string inverters continuing to fall in price, so I suspect you're right, but in the long run. In the uh, long run. It mm. just makes everything plug and play. Yeah. So and especially if they had some standard for the How How, for the how, communications. Your, how are your end phase shares going? <laughs> uh, I bought some end phase shares uh, a number of years ago, maybe four years ago. Um, I paid about four dollars for them. They went down to about forty cents. Mm -hmm. My accountant literally laughed at me. Mm -hmm. And in the last year, they've gone up to nine dollars. Very I good. I think something like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, nine nine dollars. Yeah, I I I, sh I was thinking of buying when they were about forty cents. <laughs> <laughs> Hindsight's Maybe a wonderful state, thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, you know, when I say I believe in AC coupling, yeah, my. Well, my super mm -hmm. fund, should I say, has got a few Enphase shares, but <laughs> don't put the cat before the horse. I bought mm. the shares because I believe in AC coupling. I don't yes. believe in AC coupling because I bought the shares. That is That would true. be silly. Mm -hmm. The Enphase IQ8, have you heard of those? Yes, I've heard of them because you told me all about them. Coming out. I, I, I mean, I, how good can they be? I mean, IQ8, my IQ is like 84. <laughs> that's nearly 10 times. That's like, that's nearly, nearly 10 times better. <laughs> mm. Uh, they promised them the end of 2019. There's got this thing called Ensemble technology. The promise is that you can have solar panels on your roof, no batteries, uh, the grid goes down, and the solar system keeps operating as long as there's enough sun, uh, which is pretty smart. That's pretty handy. Yep. That's kind of what people expected solar systems to do when the grid went down 10 years ago, when they mm -hmm. were, didn't really understand them. Yes. You, there are hybrid inverters that do that, but sometimes they don't do it very well. Yep. Uh, but it'll be interesting. And they've reduced the price, they claim. We'll see. Yeah, yeah, it looks, so, looks good. Yeah, that's cool. Okay, so that's the Panasonic Sexy Solar Panel. Let's last one of the day. You published this mm -hmm. yesterday. Yep. Desert Knowledge Australia, just outside Alice Springs. I've been there. Mm -hmm. um, which panels are winning? It's been there for 10 years now, but all the panels have been added. Yes. Um, over time. D definitely. So I. Uh, Divided panels into two main groups, ones which were installed at around the same time. Which was? Um, around 2011 to 2013. Yeah. And the others were in 2016. Okay. So, um, of the panels that were performing the best, of the ones I looked at, SunPower looks to be the best. Tindo was installed later and did better, but they also have N phase microinverters, which I estimate would increase their output by around 3%, maybe more. Well, that was pretty smart of Tindo. Yes, yes, <laughs> very smart. <laughs> Makes their panels look better. Yep. Oh, they're yep. very good panels. I've got they're them good, on my roof. Mm, they are good panels. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, fortunately, all the others had SMA inverters, which makes comparisons e easier. Although, yeah. Um, yeah SMA in 
generally improves their model each year. So um, there was a comment on the. Well, it was a good comment. Yeah. It said a number of things. One of them was um, you should measure. Uh, sorry, ACE. The N phase measures the power at the panel, whereas the string inverter measures the power at the string inverter. But um, I've been here, and when I looked at where the inverters were, they were very close to the panels. Right. So. So I almost don't, no difference. Almost no difference, I think. Yeah. But how are the panels selected? I didn't go into that. I should have gone into that. You missed the trick, Ronald. I did. I was tired. You've been working me so hard. <laughs> mm -hmm. I've been watching so much She-Ra, Princess of Power lately, I just didn't have time. So tell me about panel selection for Desert Knowledge. Uh, apparently, apparently the, um, the manufacturers say, here are some panels. Test them for us. And so obviously they pick average panels. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but I've been told... Winaco, Winaco just gave them whichever panels first out of their warehouse. They didn't, you know, cherry pick them. That would be a very honest like thing that. to do. That would be a very honest thing to do. I, I think we've talked for long enough. Yep, we have. <laughs> Jesus, it's mm -hmm. been nearly an hour. We'll edit it down. You don't have to sit through an hour. Okay, let's sign off. So.